Paul Revere Williams designed structures that everyone uses throughout their daily lives. He goes beyond designing wonderful structures. He goes into designing communities. The thing about his body of work is this extreme attention to detail. The quality is consistent. Williams was really a master, not just at giving his clients everything that they wanted, but specifically tailoring his design so beautifully, whether that was a mansion in Beverly Hills or a ranch house in Nevada. He put his ego aside to navigate through racial barriers to give everyone of every socioeconomic class the comfort of a home. I feel that every Nevadan should realize that Paul Revere Williams was a genius that stands the test of time. Paul Revere Williams was born in 1894 in Los Angeles, California. In 1919, he graduated from USC with an architectural engineering degree, becoming the first African-American graduate of the university. In 1923, he joined the American Institute of Architects, becoming the first African-American member of that institute. Some of the designs that he focused on are Mediterranean, Spanish, colonial, neoclassical, and after World War II, he focused more on mid-century modern. I'm Carmen Beals, and I am the curator of the exhibition, Jana Ireland on the Architectural Legacy of Paul Revere Williams in Nevada. You will be able to understand the rich history of designs by Mr. Paul Revere Williams, and you will be able to see it through a unique lens of contemporary art developed by artist and educator Jana Ireland. A lot of my work is about people, whether that is human relationships or the built environment that people create for themselves. She has this beautiful, profound way of capturing a linear design, something that's very signature of his piece, such as a curve or a window that has natural light beaming into a specific facility, followed by this gorgeous shadow that creates a rich moodiness. For the exhibition, I came back to Las Vegas. I also visited Reno and some small cities outside of Reno. Jana and I had the fabulous opportunity to visit each of these sites together. For me, it was this really exciting opportunity to do this new body of work, to meet these new people, to learn about and really study another person who I wouldn't have thought to look into on my own and to learn a lot about the field of architecture. Paul Revere Williams began working in Nevada with his first project in 1934, which was a commission by Miss Luella Garvey. Carmen and I showed up hoping to photograph the outside, and then we met someone who introduced us to someone else, and we were able to just photograph it on the spot, which is one of the wonderful surprises of working on this project. Some of the characteristics of the Garvey residence include ironwork in its exterior. It has the beautiful signature staircases that Paul Revere Williams is known for. It has many large windows to capture the natural lighting. And it is a wonderful L-shaped property that is made in a colonial revival style. I am very drawn to shadow. I'm drawn to the way light comes through a particular window at a particular time of day. I'm drawn to the way that the corners of a room might come together or to things like the place between two rooms where you can see the flooring change from one kind to another. Just the seams of it, I think, are, are what I keep looking at. Rancho San Rafael was the first place that I visited in Reno. So my first morning there, um, I got into Carmen's car and we drove out there. In 1936, 
Dr. Raphael Herman, his brother Norman Herman, and his brother's wife purchased 375 acres of land right outside of Reno. They immediately named it Rancho San Rafael. They were able to connect with Williams to commission him to design their property. The Herman House is a really good example of how Williams was very precise in his architectural drawings of delineating very specific character defining features. And that's found in everything from the curvature on the mantle to the pediments above the doorways um, and even the specific design of the ironwork in the staircase. Photographing in black and white really allows me to focus on the architecture and kind of strip out detail that I feel is extraneous, whether that is color or texture or furniture, it's just one way to zero in on what I'm really looking at. Another really neat set of properties that I photographed was the El Reno Apartments. Or in one of the El Reno apartments, which are actually self-contained homes, but they were treated as apartments when they were built in Reno in 1937. One of the things that makes these homes so unique is that they look from the outside like they're made of wood, when it's actually steel. These Lee Steel homes came out of this philosophy that good architecture should be available to everyone. The ones that we were able to visit are being used in really different ways, which is something that was really interesting to me. So there are some that are private homes, there are some that are kind of abandoned, nothing's really being done with, maybe they need some extra care. There is one that is sort of um, half museum, half office space. Another one is a restaurant. So it was fun to travel around the city and look at these different places and the way that the same architecture is just being used to do different things and seeing the same architectural details repeat in these different contexts. The first Church of Christ scientist is another Paul Revere Williams facility. Today, it's known as the Lear Theater. It's located downtown along the Truckee River. It has twin balustrades that lead up to a beautiful entry portico and the facility is supported by four thin columns. As you go into the facility, it's two stories, and you can see his signature elements of bringing in natural light that bathes the walls. Jana and I went to visit Central Nevada Circle L Ranch, the Tharp residence, along with the Lovelock Inn, which still stands today. The experience of getting into the car and seeing this brand new landscape, trying to find Dyer, Nevada, this little town that I hadn't heard of before, and then having the opportunity to spend hours and hours wandering around this unfamiliar space, which is something that is exciting to me every time I get to do it. Las Vegas was an area in the middle of the Mojave Desert. It was almost primitive in the beginning. Paul R. Williams comes here and is able to take a place like that and not just construct buildings in communities to house people, but he was able to construct buildings on the Las Vegas Strip. There are two places that Paul R. Williams designed that are just amazing. One is the La Concha Hotel lobby. The building is a architectural style called Googie Architecture, which is this really fascinating, jet-aged, sleek, futuristic style. That lobby is amazing. It shows what Las Vegas can be. It shows what the future is of the Las Vegas Strip. There is also another thing that he did, and, and this is not just because it's so elegant, but because he did it for the African-American community. Berkeley Square. Berkeley Square is the first middle-class suburb of Las Vegas, and is located in the historic West Side, which is the community that was segregated in red line for people of color to stay. 
The 148 houses are three bedroom, two bathroom. The homes are single story homes and they have low pitched roofs. And these were designed for middle class black Americans who didn't really have any development in the West Side community that they could really buy into. I think this building that we're in right now, the Guardian Angel Cathedral, has been my favorite building to photograph in Southern Nevada. One thing that I really love about this building is the way that the art and the architecture feel so firmly integrated. The stained glass and mosaics were designed by the Pixick sisters, Isabel and Edith Pixick. My favorite window personally is the window directly behind me in the sanctuary on the south side. It shows casinos that were the neighbors of this building when this building was built. It's a threshold between what was, what is, and in the eyes of faith, what will be. Uh, and I think that speaks well of how architecture serves both the function that it needs to serve to be a worthy place for people to gather, but also forms its own identity as part of what it is in a living metaphor. I am hoping that this exhibit is just going to blow your mind and just teach us something. It's only by learning more about the incredible architecture of Williams in Nevada that we can gain more appreciation for that architecture, for its beauty, and for the momentous life of Paul Revere Williams and everything that he can teach us. If you think about it, a lot of the designs that he has, they were so superior that they are still standing today and we are still talking about them right now. I hope that people see this as just kind of the tip of the iceberg, that it is a little tiny introduction to this enormous body of work that Paul Williams put out in his lifetime. I also hope that people understand it as my interpretation of the work and that they realize that if they visited these spaces, they would see completely different things and have a completely different experience of the work.